Through these five watercolours that we have here, we can see the whole duration of Dalman's career, from his very earliest works when he just moved to London, uh, to a work completed just a few years before his death. These first two portraits, clearly dated 1780, would have been completed within about a year of Downman setting up as a successful portraitist in London. And they represent two of the Waldegrave sisters, uh, the daughters of Earl Waldegrave. These two sisters were the grand nieces of Horace Walpole, who commissioned with their third sister a wonderful large oil painting from Sir Joshua Reynolds in the same year, 1780. And at this point, all three sisters were unmarried and these two portraits by Downman may well have been part of their coming into society to try to find a husband. And Downman here has used his very innovative techniques of this very, very soft pastel in the background, which he would have used a rolled up piece of paper just to soften that black chalk into this lovely soft background, which really pushes the sitter forward and shows off their amazing powdered and piled hair. And then this lovely costume with lots of detail, like the ribbon bodice here, and the lovely kerchief on this sister's hair here. This next portrait dates from the early 1780s and you can see how Downman is becoming much more ambitious with his composition here. Still using the same technique with some softened black chalk and watercolour, but just expanding to include landscape in this rather interesting horizontal oval. We know the sitters in this portrait were Lady Lushington and her son Stephen. And although this child um, looks to today's eyes like a girl, at this date, both girls and boys up until the age of four wore exactly the same dresses and wore their hair long. It was only when boys reached between the ages of four and six that they were breached, which meant being put into, an, into a pair of trousers um, and were properly gendered for the, for the first time in, in their lives. And Stephen here um, went on to have a very, very interesting career as a judge. He was a great ally of William Wilberforce and played a really active role in the abolition of, of slavery. But this gentle, uh, idyllic scene of him with his, his mother in the garden um, is obviously a, a long way away from his, his eventual very active career. So moving a little bit further into the 1780s, um, Downman is continuing to attract very aristocratic sitters. And these children are the three daughters of the Earl of Cavan, uh, who in fact was responsible for bringing uh, Cleopatra's needle over to uh, the embankment. But here, uh, Downman again has used um, stump work here with the black chalk and watercolour to create this really large, uh, fairly dynamic image of, of the three children with their dog in a landscape. And although this looks like it's been drawn in a very immediate way, we know from existing sketches that Downman took lots and lots of drawings of the girls before he finally settled on, on this composition. This final watercolour is very clearly dated 1812. And Downman by this date is, is perhaps losing a little bit of traction in, in his career and having to respond to this new fashion of neoclassical dress. He's also providing a little bit more detail for his sitters, working slightly more carefully, but still in the same technique. You can see here the black chalk and the watercolour, but in this more neoclassical setting with naturalistic hair on the sitters here. This also says London, but shortly after this date, Downman found that he had to move from, from city to city to find new patronage, new sitters to paint. Um, he'd really, by this date, covered most of society in London, and his legacy really was to leave us with an incredible story of how the rich, famous and fashionable lived in London from the late 18th to the early 19th century. Thank you.